uh, to a Tonga Valoa. You know his family better than anybody that's going to speak into a microphone today about this situation. You know Tua better than anybody that's going to speak about this situation today. Last night, obviously, we were all incredibly bummed to see another concussion happen in primetime for Tua. Uh, just if you were, I don't know if you have talked to him or if you were going to talk to Tua today, you, what would you say to him? And uh, how do you feel about the speculation of his future that's being done by everybody right now? Because we've seen him go through some brain trauma so many times on primetime. Right. Well, first of all, I will talk to him today. I haven't been able to get a hold of him yet. Um, I have a house down there in Florida, so we get together on occasion when I am there, play golf in the off season. And Tua is such a great competitor. But I think this has to be a medical decision. I mean, you have to let medical people who understand the the circumstances around these injuries, these concussions, uh, and when you have multiple concussions, that's not a good sign. Uh, and I think Tua and his family and everyone else should listen to all the mega- medical evidence to make sure that you're not compromising your future health-wise by continuing to play football. But I think that's a medical decision. I don't think that's something for me to speculate on or and I know a lot of people are doing it, and uh, you know more power to them. But I think the family should not be influenced by that. Tua should not be influenced by that. It should be all based on, you know, medical professionals. Can you tell us a little bit more about Tua? Uh, he doesn't do a lot of media. He he's done a little bit here in the past, uh, like a few months or so, I think, than he's ever done in the past. Like they talk about him having to change the way he plays. And like, hey, you should slide, 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 especially with everything that's happened. I think he trained jujitsu. They put him in a new helmet. Last year, he was completely healthy. None of these problems. Last night, team was down, rushing for a first down. Goes to lower shoulder, which I think was like setting tone for team. Because they said in week one, he gave a speech, which was kind of, uh, I don't want to say out of character, but out of the norm for him to kind of do what he did at halftime. Is there a chance that, let's say he does come back and play, that he will be able to like change who he is as a play? I don't. I, that's been tough, I think, in the past. For well, players. I can only tell you what kind of player he is. He's a great competitor. All right, first of all, he's a great person, and this is a great family. Um, I remember when we went in the house to recruit uh, him, and, you know, there were eight seats around the table and two at the head of the table. And uh, I usually try to sit in the middle and not at the head of the table so I can talk to the whole family when I'm recruiting. So nobody sits down, and I'm at the middle, and the dad looks at me, Nalu, who's to his dad, says, you can't sit there. And I said, why? He said, if you sit there, that means one of my boys have to sit at the head of the table and they haven't done anything to deserve to sit there yet. <laughs> so you have to go over there and sit. So that, that, that's the kind of family. That's Robin the Ray. kind of tradition. You ask Tua how he's doing. Yeah. He's always going to say, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I mean, these are the kind of people you're talking about. But this guy is a great competitor. And one thing that he does not know how to do is give up on a play. I mean, even when he hurt his hip at Alabama, there was nowhere to go for the ball. Nowhere. Ruggs was the receiver. He fell down. All right, so there's no even buddy to throw it to, and he's still trying to make a play and takes a hit that he doesn't need to take. And I hate it that he got hurt, and, you know, I wish I would have taken him out of the game. Hindsight's always 20-20. But, and it's the same thing with the play last night. You know, he could have slid. He had a first down. But he's a competitive, tough minded guy that's trying to set the tone for his team and ends up getting injured because of it. Yeah, and it, you know, I it's I, I got to play with Andrew Luck. And Andrew was the same way. Like, hey, give up on a play, give up on a play. And he's like one of the smartest humans on earth. Good guy loves foot like he felt like he was disrespecting football if he was to do that. Right. It feels like Tua has the same exact kind of vibe. We hope he's okay. He walked off, which is good news, mm-hmm. you know, which is good news. You think that team loves him, though, huh? You said uh, whenever he was playing and Jalen was starting, he had won over the boys because he could throw and how he was tr- acting in the locker room. It feels like they love him, and he's the perfect guy. Everybody that talks about him that's a teammate of him loves him. Uh, I think that's why it's even more of a story today right. because we're all kind of bummed out. And I think that's true, and I think that starts with the kind of person he is, the kind of compassion he has for other people, the way he treats everybody else. Uh, I I don't know. I've never seen Tua ever disrespect anyone. I've never. And all the time he was at Alabama, all the time I've spent with him since then. uh, And I think that's that's the culture, you know, to some degree. uh, But that's his parents, too. And he's just a great person. Oh, this is a great folks. Good people. All the time. Hard workers. Tough, too. Like, okay. That's why I'm, I'm excited to kind of see how this all kind of goes moving forward for two of them.